I have an airplane on top of an RV, and today we're going to start it up for the first time. And you're probably wondering how I got here. If you're new on this, this is Elvis Presley's private jet. So uh, today it's going up for auction. So I want to make sure nobody recognizes me to make sure they don't bid it up because they know I'm kind of an idiot when it comes to buying things. So nobody will recognize me. I feel a little Freddie Mercury though, but we're good. And it is shown! Holy crap! <laughs> I just bought the Elvis jet! Holy crap! <laughs> okay, no. okay, there's the wife. Silas, don't tell your mother. Hey, by the way, uh, this thing is gonna cost more than everything we own. We're gonna have to take a loan against everything we have. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> I am here in Roswell, New Mexico to see if I got scammed out of $234,000 buying the Elvis jet. Elvis Aaron Presley. That proves that Elvis owned this jet. It's, it's right there, it's real. This thing is gonna kill somebody. Gosh, this. Well, that was an impulse purchase of massive, massive magnitude. But that's what Jimmy does. Jimmy does big. So this is a new adventure. Okay, here's the truth of it. 234,000 bucks. That's more than my house cost. Just throwing that out there. Because he is such an adventurer and he is such a risk taker, calculated risk, but he's a risk taker, we get to be a part of those kinds of things. We are spending the next 24 hours in the Elvis Presley abandoned private jet in Roswell, New Mexico. Earlier today, Silas and I were both given $100 and 30 minutes in Walmart to buy our supplies for the night. Yeah, this, we might need these. <laughs> what the heck is that for? The toilet doesn't work. Yeah. Oh, heck yes. That's awesome. Okay, right here. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. No. I bought something very special to see if we can find us some aliens here in Roswell. And there's a rumor that Elvis may still be here somewhere. And we gotta set our camera back a little ways. Right, right here. The sandwich was right here, so something got the sandwich. Let's see what we got and what ate that sandwich. 4 18 a.m. Okay, let's see what we got. Boom! Right there, look at that. Oh my goodness, look at this. We get to be a part of those kinds of things. And honestly, I wouldn't have been able to do those take those kind of adventures in my life if it weren't for him. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> my heart jumped out of my chest. <laughs> Did you see me here at all? No! Yes! Yeah. Yeah, so I'm really grateful that he takes the risks that he does. It's pretty much every penny and leverage the house to boot, so we better come up with something really stinking cool to do with this jet, or might be the end of Jimmy's world, you know what I'm saying? But we're gonna go out in a burning ball of fire. There's a hunk of hunk of burning love. Today, we're gonna bring an expert in to see what it's gonna take to get this thing flying again. Finding four engines for this plane is gonna just be a nightmare. Corrosion all the way through, yeah, it's just completely should. eroded. You're gonna most likely need like brand new landing gear on this aircraft. Just gut the whole thing. You need to go through the list to make sure that each one of these you complied with for the FAA. Man, I've never seen an aircraft so damaged in my life. If you have to ask about any of these prices, you obviously can't afford it. And guess what? I'm asking about all of the prices, so clearly I can't afford it. One and a half million. million bucks for some wiring 
and an iPad. <laughs> okay, so what is what does all this add up to? All What's right. the bill at yeah. the end of the day? So your total we're looking at here. How many shirts am I gonna have to sell? <laughs> you're half, you're looking at five point seven. Oh, 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 oh my gosh! Uh, yeah. Nope. Jimmy has left the building. <laughs> I mean, it hit me, and and I was like, "What the heck did I just do? Is this the best decision of my life or the worst decision of my life? Is this gonna make Jimmy's world or is it gonna break Jimmy's world? I had no idea. It was gonna be a heck of a ride, though. That's for sure. It's never gonna be airworthy again. Not because of the money, although that's a big part of it. It's because the regulations and the parts." don't exist to make this thing meet the modern you know airplane regulations to fly again hear me out let's go outside and i'll show you what i'm what i'm thinking what if we turned elvis presley's private jet into elvis presley's private rv the king of the road this can work i'm here's my vision actually when he brought up the idea of the rv that's what i thought was crazy not even so much purchasing the Elvis jet. It was, you want to put this thing on wheels and drive it places? How are you going to do that? I could not conceptualize how that kind of thing would work. Then I thought about the dimensions of the fuselage, how big around it is and things like that. And I discovered that it was less than the highway width that you need. The length, the height, all that stuff would fit. And I thought, holy crap, how insane would that be to turn the most epic private jet owned by the most epic celebrity into a bus so that the whole world could see it instead of it being stuck in one place where everybody would have to travel and not a lot of people would see it. What if we were able to take this history piece to them? Hey Paul, was this a good idea? Replay hazy, try again. What could possibly go wrong? It says, as I see it, yes. That is the first piece of the airplane that has come off. We, should, we gotta figure something really cool to do with this. That would be the Elvis tags. The videos he showed me of them cutting them out. Just like that. Serial number 0001. We were so excited here at home when he started talking about them and selling them. So excited, they're finally done. Look at all these beautiful Elvis tags made out of the actual Elvis jet. Every single one of them is different. Check this out. Jimmy's World, go to SaveTheThreeTin.com. That's where we're gonna be selling these. And to see people get excited about them and buy them and take them home and have a piece of the Elvis jet. Again, I feel really honored that it's not only something we get to experience, but we get to hand it off to the rest of the world and say, here, let us help you be a part of Elvis's history. SaveTheThreeTin.com, baby. I think for me, that just brought it to life. It was one of those moments where I, I have a, a saying of play to win. Playing not to lose, you play on defense. You have what you have and you try to protect it. Playing to win means to step out, to make decisions that will propel you and take you beyond that little bit that, that I'm trying to protect. And I knew that this was those moments where I was pushing the gas pedal down because we are playing to win. Woo! Look out! Got an airplane delivery. Welcome to the new home of the Elvis jet, temporarily, until we get the full build done. This is where all the action is gonna happen. Step one, getting it off the trailer. Yeah, because that's definitely not sketchy at all. What scares me is not that we got it in here, it's 
what comes next. We're gonna get her reaction on film so I have evidence for the courts. You're the best one ever. Congrats, close. Okay, now our life savings. What do you think? That's it? <laughs> What? I expected it to be bigger. <laughs> Caption. That's funny. Oh no. It's not the first time I've heard that. Wow. <laughs> oh, so cool. Oh, there's a step up in the car. You want to join a club? <laughs> uh, we'll see you guys in a few minutes. A few moments later. Hey! <laughs> Are you able to stand up back I'm there? I'm totally standing up. To see and to sit in an airplane that Elvis owned. I mean, that's huge. That's I'm so plane. glad that lots of people get to see this. Because this is, is really special. Yes. The miracle part of this entire thing is that the motorhome that was completely junk, except for the motor transmission and frame, fits perfect onto this. First thing we need to do, Measure how long the wheelbase is to see where the front tire is going to go, where the back tire is going to go, and if they're even remotely close to where we need them. That's about 19 feet and a half. 19 feet would get us right here. We come up, whoop, boom, holy crap. The steering box comes down to right at five feet. Five feet, the steering box would come to right here. Look at that, dude. It's not even seven feet wide. Check this out. The generator will fit in the battery box. Come on. Dude, this is nuts. I'm not sure what to do with myself at this moment because I was not expecting this. This is, this is like miracle level stuff. I hate to say it, Jimmy, but I think it's gonna work. We got us a donor RV. We're gonna build us an Elvis Jet RV. gonna go on tour well first thing you got to do is you got to un rv the rv and you know that was another great day where we involved some of the american favorite pastimes <laughs> the only thing left to do is carefully disassemble it <laughs> Lights, camera, action. Holy crap! Grizzly, we got a generator! <laughs> we got the generator fired up and working. We tested the lights in the airplane. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Now we have to get the brakes, the steering, and the engine started before we can drive it. Morning, Grizz. Morning, Jimmy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we may not get anything done today. <laughs> I love this window. I wish I would have known this was here all the whole time. In pure Jimmy's World fashion, we're just diving into the sucker and we have no idea what's underneath, but one way to find out and that's to just open it up. We have one shot to get this right. There's lots of tubes and wires and other things on the other side of that metal. And we don't know exactly where this hole is going to be. All right, Grizzly, so show me where your hole is. It's gonna be right here. We also have to make sure it's lined up with where the yoke is going to be. So, um, 
you know, what could possibly go wrong. Why, how the heck are you supposed to see down in there? I just need a direct route. Yeah. And then up here is where we need space. So once we find out where we're running it through, we're just gonna cut an access panel on the outside. So that way we can service and do all that stuff. You may have to poke a hole and I'll have to turn all the lights off. That's a possibility, correct. And see just some sun shining well, in. Well, I'll shine the flashlight up if we have to. Yeah, okay. So I guess go drill a hole and, you know, if something really bad starts going or if it catches on fire, just let me know so I can bail out. Roger that. Hey, here we go. <laughs> Aha! All right, Grizz, I think I'm gonna have you come up here and look at this hole to see what, what you think as far as where we're gonna move it. So it's off to the side of this post a little bit and it's probably, I don't know, couple inches back. And worst case scenario, if the angle is too much out there, we can slide the fuselage forward or backwards an inch or two if we need to. Because this has to be lined up right. This is, and this is the only physical connection on the entire project, is this steering shaft right here. Correct. Other than the actual mounts. Right. Well, stick your head in there and take a peek. Well, come on out, sir. All right, let me get out of the way. Are we going to need to cut out rudder, rudder pedals? And rudder pedals got to go. This yoke needs to go, and the, the bar that goes underneath it needs mm -hmm. to go. So I'm probably gonna end up taking this panel off, this panel off, and this panel off as well. I'm All happy. Right. So now it's tear out more cockpit choppy. time and... Choppy, choppy, cutty, cutty. There's one. This is not as easy as I thought it would be. There's gotta be a better way. But I'm concerned about cutting the panel as well. Because we don't want to damage that. I got no more teeth left on my blade. That's smooth. This foot you got out? No. Or is that, that the hard one? That's the hard one. Okay. There's no room. Yeah. And whatever is inside of there is made out of vibranium or something. Because I've gotten... And you're cutting them just straight off like this, right? Well, Floor the one I cut off straight, this one I can't get in there because the panels are still there. Airplane life. I can't get to that because this is in the way, and I can't get that out of the way because that's in the way, and I can't get to this because it's connected to the first thing that I was trying to get out. That's how I feel on the inside. I'm just spitballing here because Skill saw. Cuz I'm, I'm I'm thoroughly frustrated right now. It's cuz you're hangry. Grab some lunch. Let's go. I bet I can cook a better steak than you. It's Jimmy versus Grizz in the ultimate cook-off. Our champion James Webb from the Lithia Culinary Institute. And the challenger, the man known as Grizzly from the Everglades Survival Cooking Academy. The Ultimate Cook-Off, brought to you by Good Ranchers. America's meat delivered. Today is about the surf and the turf. Grizzly, choose your surf, choose your turf. And the clock starts now. Good luck, gentlemen. The judges will be here in less than an hour, so we gotta get cooking. My plan is salmon on a bed of rice with a little bit of drizzle sauce on top of this with some avocado tomato salad. For the steak, I'm going simple. Salt, pepper, a little bit of bacon grease. That's all you need. Mwah! It's gonna be lovely. So I'm gonna do a garlic herb butter steak and salmon with some garlic green beans. And our contestants begin spicing it up. Just know that everything I do, I win. When you go up against the avocado, you have no chance. Ow! That is some weak trash talk from Jimmy. An avocado can't crush a meat lover like Grizz. He's already finished his prep. All right, now I get to just kind of sit and chill. Snow shower, do the pepper. Grizzly, you have no chance. Less is more. Ah. 
I forgot I still gotta make my sauce. The olive oil, the butter, the garlic. <coughs> Excuse me. Basil. What to do with salt, a lemon. Bring that to a boil, let it simmer. He's doing way too much secret sauces and salads and little herb and garlic. It's all you need. Now it's time for the steaks. I chose the beef bone-in ribeye steak because look at that bone right there. This is the most tender cut of meat. All that marbling is fantastic looking. I love this steak. It is pull apart with your fork tender. Say I love you in February with meat. Grizzly, I want your meat. Goodranchers.com, use the code Jimmy's World, save yourself 10% and you can be enjoying the same stuff. It is fantastic, check them out. Okay, let's get prepping on this. Oh man, just look at that right there already. You can tell this is so tender and yummy. All right, that's it, let's throw them on the pan. With Grizz firing up the grill, Jimmy is laying down the secret sauce in hopes of winning over the judges. Now, bacon grease, secret weapon. Gotta get a good base going. This is 100% American hand-trimmed steakhouse quality meat and seafood. Oh, there's some smoke. Smoke on the water. I think that's something different, but. Okay, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Hoo-wee! Come in hot. Oh, man! So you like garlic, huh? I do, I do. I like garlic. Um, Is that why you've never been bit by a vampire? That's probably true, yeah. Um, so my salmon, I just kind of wrapped it in aluminum foil with some really aromatic herbs and butter and uh, sealed up all the edges on the aluminum foil so it just sits in there and gets a real good steam bath and all that yumminess. All right, first peek. Oh, look at that. That steak's so big it won't even fit in there. Oh, yeah. Right, yours comes out. Right. Goes in. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Get out. Second place is not a bad place to be. Great yeah, I'm place. the only one that's gonna be done on time. All right, here we go. With the clock ticking down, you can tell Jimmy's starting to feel the pressure. A little soft, a little crunch. Just about perfect. Grizz proudly plates it up while Jimmy has got his eye on the clock. But we still got two minutes to go. You can feel the tension. Look at that. Pull apart. I don't even need to cut that. That's ridiculous. Will Jimmy's tender meat bring him the prize? There are not words to describe it. That is so stinking good. Yeah. Like so. With just seconds remaining, Jimmy begins to plate it up. Look at that. Yum E. If you win, there's definitely an asterisk because you're uh Two minutes late. We were filming, he had to say, do it again, do it again, do it again. You, you gotta account for that, it's a competition. That's what losers say. <laughs> Chris is losing. Let's bring in our judges. Okay, here we go. Plate A, plate B. Taste it, salmon, steak. Let us know what you think. And which one you like best. Which one do you want? Here, grab this one. This one is nice and soft. Okay. That is really good. Ready? That'll do. Hopefully good. Yeah. 
Quase sempre. <risos> Just for steak, just for the meat, on the count of three, point to your favorite one. Ready? <laughs> one, two, three. Okay. Were you doing that just because you knew it was mine? No, I liked the flavor on that one. Okay. All right. The second okay. bite was better. I, I like this these more. Salmon. So we have two for one, one for that one. Salmon on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> All right, fine, Grizzly. You win. Yay, Grizzly! And the new cook-off champion, it's Grizz. Well done, gentlemen. Okay, so what we gotta do, what we're... In the side there, we think we can take the safety wire off, which we've cut here, pull this bolt out, and then slide this off to be able to get the rudder pedal off. However, we're not sure if this is gonna just slide off nice and easy. We're hoping so. So here's 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 the test. Oh yeah, there's that bar you were trying to cut through. That mm -hmm. is solid. Take this out, and then hopefully this will just slide off. In some weird alternative universe. <gasps> that was way too easy. <laughs> if it actually does it that easy on the inside. I'll be surprised. Yep. Yeah, put it in the comments. How easy do you think that in real life is gonna be when we don't have the room? Here we go. So if you put that there and you put that there and then you hold this sideways and then you hold that and then you pull and you twist and you pull out. Now we can get this bolt. So if all goes well, I can take the bolt out. <laughs> then, that should come off. Oh yeah. Oh, who's your, who's your daddy? What the? Oh, who's daddy? <laughs> I knew it would come out. So he was cutting this part and he cut into it and it didn't even scratch this thing there and that's hardened steel. That's, that's gonna be a challenge to cut through that. But uh, hey, we just, we just yank it apart. How cool is that? Lockheed. It's not even worn that much, look. Now that we cleared the brake pedal, Riz is free to clear a path for the steering column. We found the brake master cylinder. Yeah. Woo! That's a really odd place to put it. So you know what I think we should do? They made those drill bits that are like this long, and we should just grab it and go, Wah! shaft hole. It, it's, it's, it's a thought, and then we don't have to worry about bracing. <laughs> Stupid. <gasps> that is, uh, <sighs> that is satisfying, isn't it? Fire one! Boom! I don't think so. Get it? Now we can see up in there. Hey! -oh! Nice! Look at that monstrosity. Oh wow! We got all kinds of room now. Well done. Bam. You can always go bigger. You can't go smaller once the hole is cut. And we're planning on putting a patch over it anyway with a grommet that's gonna go around the steering shaft that goes up. So we're, we're planning on putting a big patch inspection type panel on it. I am really glad that that made as much room as it did. Now we can get our laser from here, go up, take a measurement and start mounting the 
90 degree thing up on top. It, it'll come up through this area here and then it needs to come out this way. We have our 90 degree that's gonna be mounted to the back of this and then the steering shaft will come out right here. That's a huge step to be able to get to putting the steering in this thing. That to go up, bam. Yep, that's where we need to go. Wait, don't cut those wires, we need those. I will cut you, Jimmy. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so serious. So now what we need to do is grab a broom handle, stick up in there and make sure we have a straight shot at it. Samurai, what the? Silly kids. All right, Grizz, you ready? Yep, you guys done playing down there? Broom handle's coming up. Golly, that's a long steering shaft. It's gotta go through that little corner right there. Put it on the mark. That's us. Oh yeah. Now what I get to figure out is what wires from this gigantic mess need to go up inside here. One thing I just realized is the dash is actually right about here. So we have to figure out where these wires can come through back there, route them all the way through here, and get them up to here. And I don't know if they're long enough or not. I guess first thing we gotta do is figure out what wires we we're dealing with. Yeah, that's... Man, I had all this stuff straightened out before we moved it. Aha! This is the transmission selector, which we need, definitely, to go up there. Okay, so this is the wire harness here, so I can separate it, I think, from here. Yeah, I think I can just route that individually so we can come off of this, route it wherever we need to go, up and in. Sweet! Hey, Grizz! Yeah? You know where we can mount this thing? Uh, in here somewhere. Right. Okay. Now I am looking for the key. Such a mess. Good night. What the heck? One eternity later. I can't find the key thing that goes into this. It's either over here somewhere or it's over here. <sighs> ha ha! Now I gotta find that plug there somewhere in this mess. Looking for a bunch of red wires that go into a plug. Ha ha. Ha ha ha, I think, I think this is it. All right, wires all match up. All right, so found that harness. It goes to the key. I think we have enough wire. I don't think our harness is gonna be too short. <laughs> this thing is massive. So all these harnesses are these right here. So I wonder if it might just be easier Go in the same hole that we're going in like that. What's up, boss man? All right, I need to, uh, we need to, we, we found the key, we found the transmission, we found some of the uh, key stuff, but this is where all the main harnesses come out, and it's up here, but it looks like trash if we were to just take it up right there. So when we get done though, ideally I'd want to see these doors closed and we can cut a hole, run them up through there, and then just box it in. Make it out of one by one box steel and some sheet metal and just kind of bump it up and it'll hide everything. Yeah, just basically make a, a tube. Yeah, or a box or yeah, rectangle, hidden whatever, whatever it turns out octagon. looking best. So the thing with the RV is you had not only a truck so you have your brakes and steering like your things in your car you also have house stuff things like a hot water heater and air conditioners and all kinds of other things and they were all mixed together 
thankfully, we're dealing mostly with chassis or like normal car stuff, but there's a lot of sensors and then there's a lot of other things that we may or may not be using. That's what I got to figure out is what we're going to need and what we're not going to need to make this thing work. Okay, got batteries. This one concerns me. It looks like it was connected to something recently and it's clean, but I have absolutely no idea what it goes to. Mystery wire. What the heck did that go to? And those are ground wire and a power wire. Okay, that's easy enough. We'll just keep all the mystery wires together. It's a mystery box as well. Power wire of some sort. All right, so I know these are all my fuses and relays. Relays and toggle switches. I think this goes to the steering column. Maybe not. All right, I know this is our transmission plug thing. All right, making some progress. 2,000 years later. Ah, yes! That plugs into there, yes. And this one plugs in right there. Okay, so now I think we need to follow the power back there and figure out a power source and how this gets power and hook a battery to it. We have to get the electrical system of this talking to this. We start with the batteries right here, 12 volts DC. These are to connect that, but this is 28 volts. So I had to get a step up converter to 28 volts with this thing right here. That will then power the airplane up here. However, we have a generator up front that produces 120 volts AC, which is not the electrical stuff that we need for this. It's the same thing that you have in your house. So this converts it to 12 volts, which then will go back to the 28, which will then talk to the airplane. That's where this thing comes into play. It takes the 120 volts AC, alternating current up and down, changes it to 12 volts DC, direct current flat, that your car batteries use, to then go to this to convert to then charge the batteries that then go into this box which that then goes into the airplane yeah that's that's easy that that is i am so far outside of what i should be touching i spent about six hours on the interwebs and i found a wiring diagram that i think is going to work it's not the exact one but should get us pretty darn close it's five pages of just the million lines on it. So we gotta go one wire at a time. Okay, here is my ignition switch. We're gonna start there. Here's the different key positions. You have accessory, your start and run, and then your start only, and then the main power coming in. So the main power coming in is the wire I need to find first, and that is gonna be in the fuse block. I'm pretty sure this is the ignition switch. It matches this plug right here. Stick that in that one. Now, if I pull the fuse to make sure I don't get something else, but if I stick it in there, it should beep if it's the right one. And the lovely thing that I learned is these wires are labeled. This connects to the battery terminal and then this goes to the switch and it should beep. Aha, okay, there it is. Perfect connection. So that is confirmed that that's that power wire right there. And that should be it for up front, I think. Now we have to go to the back of the RV and figure those few wires out and then plug the power in and see if this works. If I did my math correct, this thing should turn on when I turn the key. 
Go ahead and put in the comments if you think that's going to happen or not. Here we go. Oh, we got relays and beeping. Clicking. Clicking. Hey, the gas gauge is working. So, all right, are we ready to see if this thing will crank? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> yes! RPMs are working. Oil's working. Nothing else is working. Voltage is low. <laughs> yeah! Yes! That is awesome! Everybody do a victory dance. Yes! Super duper gang! Yes!